Welcome to our show. It's Tuesday, January 25th, 2021, episode 126. I'm Chatty Patty. Hello, Ella. <laughs> our guest today is Vinny Dombrowski. Vinny, Vinny. That theme Vinny, song, Vinny. that theme song, hi, Patty. Hey, Paula, that theme song rocks. Thank you. <laughs> high energy so, like us. <laughs> now, we know Vinny from Sponge crud the orbisons maybe even loud house i don't know maybe there's other bands but um your current project is songs that got me through it tell us about what you're doing now oh that that vinyl record uh was a product of literally the pandemic it wasn't a record made during the pandemic necessarily but um for the last couple of years uh, sponge has done a thanksgiving eve show at st andrews hall and uh, we thought that uh, the, we wanted to affiliate ourselves with a charity for that particular show. The Pope Francis Center is a stone throw from St. Andrew's Hall downtown. And we thought, well, if we can help out the local community uh, with some of the proceeds from that show, we'll do it. And it was such a hit. The folks down at Live Nation, St. Andrew's Hall, asked us to come back for the last couple of years. And the, the Pope Francis Center was our charity partner the whole time. And because of the pandemic going on, uh, we weren't able to do that show this year, but we decided uh, to put together a record of Detroit bands doing their favorite Detroit songs, and we would sell that vinyl online. We got a donor to pay for all the hard costs, so every dime that we've made selling those records goes right to the Pope Francis Center uh, to help the homeless community in downtown Detroit. Oh, that's fantastic. Oh, yeah. Yep. Wow. Yep. So tell us more about the Pope Francis Center. I, I read that they are open during the pandemic. I know a lot of places are struggling, but, um, you know, can you tell us more about that organization? Absolutely. Well, a lot of folks would think because it's called the Pope Francis Center that, you know, they have more money than God, but uh, it is privately funded and they help the homeless community not only with like meals, but they help them uh, regarding laundry, showers addiction counseling, legal help. And I guess people take for granted that they have an address. Some folks don't even have an address. So how can you get a job with no address? The Pope Francis Center gives some of these residents uh, an address. They also are starting to put some of the residents in permanent housing as well. So right now they're um, in the TCF Center. They have the, the showers set up in the TCF Center. They're doing laundry. They're feeding uh, the homeless, and they're busier right now than ever. So, and I know that um, the link uh, can be provided somewhere along the broadcast or on Facebook, whatever. Um, it's Mimi Records, it could be Mimi Records Detroit, but uh, we have a link on the Sponge Facebook site that has a link to that record. And every dime sold uh, from those records goes directly to the Pope Francis Center. And if people just want to make a donation directly to, maybe they can also do that absolutely yeah so it's been ongoing what we've done with uh, the pope francis center if sponge is out doing we do a we were doing a yearly pub crawl and uh, a portion of the proceeds would go to the pope francis center as well so anytime we can include them we certainly do that people need all the help they can get these days and Ooh. that's really great that you're doing that absolutely absolutely so you re recorded seven tracks uh, tell us some of the um, people you've collaborated with and um, what songs we can look for. Well, we, we were fortunate enough to go into the, um, the Shores Theater, which is being renovated, but uh, Dave Harden, the owner, who also owns Butter Run uh, Saloon in uh, St. Clair Shores, let us get into the theater, set up a um, recording rig and some lights and... Uh, we got um, the hard lessons to kind of come out of retirement to do a song. We got Jennifer Westwood and the Handsome Devils, uh, Laura Mendoza and the Firewalkers, the Orbitsons, Sponge, 
Ricky Rat Pack, and then there was uh, Mike Skill from the Rom Romantics has a song on the record as well. Oh, great. I'm oh. going to get one. What I a fun get... group of people. It's so oh, it's exciting. It, it's beautiful. It's clear uh, Coke bottle style vinyl. So it's just a beautiful vinyl record. The first hundred albums uh, have a insert from the legendary Detroit artist Glenn Barr uh, included in that uh, in the sleeve. So it's it's really really cool. Oh, that's cool. Are are any of them available for download or just vinyl only? Just just vinyl right now. I know it's a good point you bring up. You know, so many folks they go, ah, oh, if I could just get the download or a CD, that would be cool. It's something we're thinking about doing, but the vinyl right now is what we have. And uh, the download probably in the future. Awesome. Awesome. Too bad we couldn't do a concert with all these bands. Maybe someday. Maybe outside in the summer. <laughs> well, that's what we're looking forward to. You know, it, it will warm up and we can go and do some stuff outside. So, you know, fingers crossed. Yeah. As were you finding that were people excited to have a purpose and get out and, um, you know, make some music for some, a good cause? Absolutely. And, you know, we had enough room to where some of the musicians uh, could social distance. They came in in masks if they felt they needed to wear masks. So I think we did a really good job at it. And, you know, we, we documented a lot of it. Our, our friend Sal Rodriguez took a ton of pictures and which are included uh, on the cover of the record as well. So it's just a dynamite thing to do. And yeah, and everybody was pumped up a great, you know, Detroit musicians are just fantastic. Well, Detroit is lucky to have you, Vinny, I just want to say, because I'm a fan and I love the Orbitsons and I'm a girl that swears <laughs> and I just think you're the, one of the best front men front and we're very lucky oh, to have you. God bless you. But, you know, it was funny. We're, we're, we're talking about songs for a second. The, the, the Orbitsons, I love girls that swear. I know this is a, uh, you know, it's a... Uh, all ages show, so to speak. So we don't need to get into the details of some of the swearing contests we've had at the shows, but they can get pretty wild. That was fun. I was one of the women up there. <laughs> I'm sure Patty was too. <laughs> so speaking of songwriting, I just have a quick question. Like when you write a song, you wake up with something in your head or do you say, I'm going to tackle this subject and write a song about it? Or do you just, I know personally, I just wake up sometimes and it's like, oh my gosh, I got to go write this down. And you got, did you have a particular, do you have a title in your head or do you have a melody in your head? What do you have? Melody and chorus. Usually it's a chorus because to me, the chorus is the most important, you know, repeat part. Yeah. So you got the, you got the chorus title, you got the melody in your head. I think it's always such a great place to start because you kind of know at that point you're going to fill in the blanks basically it's like it's the movie title so now what's the rest of the movie going to be you know what i mean i i i think like that you know and sometimes it's something from your past so it's not like you're you're really you're trying to put it together correctly to tell the story as opposed to sometimes you take the liberty of making stuff up too, which is a lot of fun, you know, but then also it's real life stuff too, which I, I have a lot of fun with as, as well. So you wake up with choruses that in makes... your head as well. <laughs> oh yeah. I, I oh. imagine you're, you you see the whole picture because you're like an artist. Well, that's stretching, the... that's stretching a little bit. <laughs> an artist. artist. I, I have a, a lot of fun uh, writing songs. And it's it's not something that I'll do. If somebody wants a record, you know, I guess some people write. But I, I tend to write as much as I possibly can and, to, you know, record stuff on my phone or write it down. Because uh, the more I do it, I think the better I get at it. And I think I still have yet to write my best songs if there ever is such a thing. So I just, I, I like to keep cranking away, you know, like you're talking you about, some, what's that? You got some good ones, dude. <laughs> oh, you know, I, it's funny when you talk about the bee writing the termite song, how does that go? <laughs> Termites, da, 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 termites da, da, uh, it, I don't remember the exact words, but it was a soup. B is a great songwriter. I know he is. That's the thing about the the wealth, the depth of, of talent in the city. I just the B cracks me up. He, did you ever go downtown to the art fair at the Russell ever? Yes. Okay, so the B would set up all his paintings down there, right? And the, the bee is always great to talk to. This one time, 
I'm looking at the bees paintings, you know, and I'm, I'm hoping that him and McCarty get along today. I don't, I don't know if they do. Um, I've heard this on again, off again, but I'm looking at the bees paintings and it's a tombstone. You know, you see in the, in the foreground, it's got McCarty's name on it. I go, hey, B, I go, B, what are you doing, man? That's McCarty's name. He goes, yeah, I know. Oh, no, I think they're still really good friends. So I, I think I think it's good. <laughs> <laughs> it was funny. I love the B. Yeah. Do you ever want to write songs for other people? Do you ever like hear write a song for someone else's voice? Uh, you know, I have in the past. Uh, and it's a challenge. I, I, I If they want to sing something, it's got to fit people. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I'm writing for somebody. I'm, I'm recording the band and writing the band. That's always uh, interesting to me. You know, I'd like to do more of that kind of thing. But you know, it's like uh, the collaboration world is kind of a tough world to get into. I, I found, but um, but nonetheless, very good. What would you rather play, an arena or a club? I love clubs. I, I still do. I love clubs. Arenas are a lot of fun, but um, I just find that the, when the stages are too big and it can't be intimate, the stage is intimate, I like it a lot. But I just like the intimacy of club shows. You know, I like to see people be able to, you know, touch their hand and chit chat and sing to them and get them up on stage. And I, I just think it's, uh, it's much more of my kind of thing. But yeah, the arenas, man, when it gets too big, really becomes kind of well you played in ireland and belgium what is like one of the biggest shows you've played well like um polka pop i think that was in belgium they had all of this um you know they have army bases that they convert to where they can sell weed and hash and stuff like that so we found that pretty interesting when we were you know younger oh, and touring and stuff like that but yeah i mean polka was definitely a big one rock and journey was a big one you know we've done a ton like uh Lollapalooza back in the day um when metallica was on Lollapalooza, you know and we we still managed to you know find stages to play on you know but uh over the last 10 15 years we've sure done our share of clubs I and mean, i'm not complaining at all i have a ball i'd rather attend a club show than i would an arena show for sure Everything costs more in an arena, though. The ticket, the beer, and the it merch. It takes more time. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, and the parking stinks. It's just like I go, forget it, man. I want to be in a club. Yeah. Now, where did you grow up, Vinny? Um, on the east side of Detroit. Uh, so it would have been like a stone throw from Harpo's. Um, but, um, yeah, I, I lived in Detroit until 1994. It was on the same corner. You know, during the riots and during the, um, you know, when the Tigers won the World Series the first time, uh, well, not the first time, but they won in 68 and they won in 84, still in Detroit. I moved out of Detroit in 94, but I raised a family in Detroit. I was one of those kids that were, uh, they, when they started busing in Detroit, I was one of those kids that had to get on the Detroit City bus to go into a whole other school district, you know, but I uh, definitely spent my time in Detroit. It's a great city. It's a wild place, man, you know, and it's been it's been a lot of different things to a lot of people over the years, you know, and I think I'm a you know better person for it. But, uh, yeah, it was it was pretty brutal to some of us at some time. So but we're you know here to talk about it today. Have you ever had a voice lesson? Because I feel like your vocals have evolved. You know what? It's funny you bring that up. I, I've been going to a speech therapist you know my i go to my ear nose and throat guy once a year and i was over there a couple of weeks ago and he goes you could benefit with some speech therapy <laughs> i go okay whatever you think man so i go okay let's 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 have that but it's more economy doing things right and trying to improve on the things that i'm not doing so right so yeah trying to get better <laughs> yeah i want you to read me a nighttime story like on my call map i think you'd be good at that <laughs> well I'll, I'll be a little bit better at it after i do my vocal practices for the next couple <laughs> of weeks then hit me up for that rock 
Okay. Do you find like you got a big show coming? Do you like not talk for a while? Because I know I blow my voice so easy. I mean, you can't. No, I just try not to drink whiskey. Okay. <laughs> That's what oh, I'm doing. Bummer. <laughs> Now you go Dry to, is the key word there. You, you go to clear liquid uh, alcohol. Clear Tequila. liquid. So tell us some liquid. stories. What about those days back on like MTV? Do you have any weird MTV stories? MTV stories. You mean like uh, talking to, remember Kennedy back in the day? Yes. I think I do. We would interview with Kennedy back in the day and, and, and do some of their like, um, big MTV uh, events, you know, the rock the vote in Chicago and stuff like that. But, you know, we generally tried to behave during MTV type of uh, events, you know, and didn't behave so good during other events, unfortunately. Weren't you on the Howard Stern show? <laughs> well, yes, we, Howard has been a big fan of the song plowed. And I heard he was talking about plowed just the other day again. And, um, over the last three, four years, Howard said wonderful things about that song. And I go, why does he love this song? Come to find out, Howard had a similar growing up experience as, as I did in Detroit, which was like, you know, you lived in a severely integrated neighborhood. You know, your parents didn't move away to the suburbs and you stayed in the neighborhood you grew up in and you went to the school that you got bused to. And from what I found out, Howard had a very similar growing up. So I just thought about that. I go, maybe that's why he likes the song Plowed so much. But uh, his his uh, producer, Steve Brandano, uh, would call me up, email me from time to time. He goes, you got to come on the show. And I said, we're just never there during the week. We're always in New York on the weekends. So uh, finally, we said, you know what? We'll make a trip out. And we managed to get out there on a Thursday. Howard was not obviously in the studio on the Thursday, but we drove out and uh, recorded a couple songs out there and uh, did a quick interview. And it was a real treat to be in that studio. And it's always a pleasure to hear Howard talk about the band. And it's a privilege to you know, have somebody love a song like that. That's, that's really, you know, just kick ass. I'm a Howard Stern fan. So I like that story. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. Well, I just watched your Howard Stern performance from November, 2019 singing um, Vaseline by Stone Temple Pilots. It was killer. It was awesome. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Howard has a whole list of like some of his favorite nineties, uh, songs you know he's been a dj obviously doing the stuff for years and his vast experience in radio and um anybody that would come on his show like the goo goo dolls covered plowed so you'd go like the goo goo dolls would maybe play iris and then they would play plowed which was a cool thing to see johnny goo singing plowed <laughs> oh that's really cool what about some other tv shows you were on like john stewart or letterman conan was that all fun or is that a chore do you get nervous? Yeah, I mean, of course, yeah, ne de definitely nervous. The more you do things like that, I think the more, a little more comfortable you get. But I'm just a club guy, you know what I mean? Any way th that a, a, a performance can feel like a club to me is always a blast. You know, that's where I, I feel the most comfortable. T TV is a gas, but I just go, I'd rather, you know, be in a stinky club. Well, we hope you're not nervous today being on our show. <laughs> I am. Uh, I am. <laughs> well, I, you've been with so many different record labels. How does that work? Is it beneficial to move around a lot? Uh, it's, it's unavoidable the longer I think you stay in the business. The thing about it is early on uh, with the major labels embracing the band and MTV being so hot back then and radio was so fantastic uh, for up and coming groups. It made sense. But as times changed, people's tastes change, um, you make different decisions about where you're going to release your next record. And if you're not going to be a focus at one label, you move to another one where you hope you're, you'll be a focus. Then eventually, you know, nobody's selling records anymore. You start to re release records on your own. You go more independent and independent in, in, in your route. However, Sponge has a label right now called Cleopatra. We have a new record coming out. It's been delivered. It's been recorded. We were just talking about Rust Belt. Al Sutton um, tracked most of that record over at Rust Belt, and Al mixed the record, uh, and it just sounds absolutely killer. We're excited to release it, but because we can't tour to support it, we're 
you know, we're not exactly sure when it's going to get released. Yeah, there's so many new challenges with this situation that that's one you just don't even think about. You know, I mean, it's just it's really it's really difficult. But if you want to stay in the business, you find new ways to do stuff, you know, like, you know, teach guitar in your garage. That's a good idea. What about it's, licensing your songs to TVs and movies? Because you have done that a couple of times. Yep, yep. And it's a great revenue source for labels and, and bands. And, um, you know, it's a big help if you're an independent artist. However, because nobody sells records anymore, everybody's taking off. Well, we license you know. So everybody goes to license records. And really the last thing that we've had over the years is getting out there and touring and going out to play the club shows or if we're fortunate enough to get on a tour. Um, that's the last source of income that had hadn't run out and now that's kind of in question for the next it, it might not be till next year before we're back to some kind of what we would think is normal regarding touring i know i played a show some shows over the summer and what they did is they spray painted circles in the lawn and the family unit sat in the circles it was kind of bizarre right yeah i'll do that Yep, the Flaming Lips just did a show, I guess, with everybody in a bubble in the audience. You know, you have your own bubble that you put on. So I go, that's that's interesting, but I, but you know, I go, that's not quite what I would think a a normal rock experience would be. I think that that maybe not. Wait, maybe try not to touch your mic because we're losing your voice a little bit when Crackling. you move the mic around. I'll try not to move it there. Okay. I think don't move. Think. Don't move. Thank you. Sorry about that. So did you ever well, consider little... acting? Did you ever consider acting? You know, I, I, I was asked to do a couple short spots and some movies and stuff like that, but it's nothing that I've ever uh, been asked to do on a more regular basis. I wouldn't count it out. If there was some money in it, <laughs> I would consider it, but uh, <laughs> it sounds fun. Even music videos got to be a challenge. You know, you're not singing it live and you're pantomiming and I don't know. It all just feels so phony to me, you know, like doing a music video. I just can't stand taking pictures anymore. I don't like to do music videos, although I have to do them. Yeah, it just seems kind of phony, you know, like you're, you're acting. And I don't know, I find it seems like every actor wants to be a musician, but I, I don't know too many musicians that want to be actors. Although, <laughs> Chris Christopherson did a great job, you know. Willie Nelson's done some things. I just go, I don't know. It seems like everybody wants to be a in a rock band. Or Dolly Parton. She's good at both. She, she's fantastic. She's, I know. She's great. So, what are you listening to these days? Anything new? Uh, you know, Bob Dylan had this killer box set that came out with a bunch of Johnny Cash stuff on it. Him and Johnny Cash singing songs together. So, you know, I, I had been listening... Uh, to that uh, which is it's a great box set i forget what label it came out on but i yeah i thoroughly enjoy that you know who gets sick of bob dylan i don't know but uh that record and then um uh, uh tanya tucker uh did a record with shooter jennings and um oh i'm trying to think She's of the having a big comeback oh it's it's just a great record i really enjoy it and I'm trying to think, uh, is it Belinda Car? Not Belinda Carlisle, but it's, uh, oh man, the, the gal that co-wrote and produced with Shooter on this record, her name isn't coming to the, my brain right now, but I'll, is it Mandy? No, I got to think of her name, but uh, I think the Tan Tanya Tucker record is just dynamite. And one of my favorite records still is another record that Shooter Jennings did, which is Waylon Jennings' son. It's a song with Billy, a uh, record with Billy Don Burns, which is uh, was recorded in the same room that. Um, here, here's another name, man. It's not the Graham Parsons died in. So it's like uh, people can find these records out there on the internet. But yeah, that, that's kind of what I listen to. I'm not listening to much rock stuff, you know. I'm really into Alabama Shakes. Do you like Al Brittany Howard? She's a fantastic talent and, you know, deserves all the success that she possibly can get. And I feel bad because you know, who can tour right now? But yeah, I mean, that band is just fantastic. She's a true talent. I know. She's she's amazing. Yep. 
So, so I was looking at um, some or all of your album covers, all of the Sponge album covers, and I was just curious how much you put into that because um, I don't know. Like I said, I think you are like an artist kind of, and it seems like you would care really a lot about the album covers. <laughs> Well, I, I tend to go to, you know, friends of mine that do graphic art and uh, <laughs> one album cover, Galore, Galore, comes to mind where I, I sat with Mark Arminski because Mark Arminski, you know, legendary Detroit artist, he's done rock posters. He's been on our show. <laughs> he's been on our show. <laughs> what a great guy to sit and chit chat with. Great stories. Just just interesting individual. And uh, I walked into Mark's studio one day and all i had was the um the name of the record and i said mark I, all i got i have no direction other than the name of the record and uh i go it's galore galore and um he goes he thinks for a minute he goes then all i see are two large breasts on the cover and I, go, <laughs> I go make this happen so, so he, he he did a he got a model so to speak and got a photo shoot together obviously no nudity that you can see but nonetheless that was uh that was one of the uh you know kind of cool rock covers that we've done and the, the inspiration was just the name that was it mark did the rest yeah he is amazing I, detroit in, in addition to so many great musical artists we have so many great visual artists you know the glenn bar niagara mark arminsky i mean it's just a hotbed of talent Bob, in the Bob town. Nixon, you know, our buddy Dave Mazzarelli has done a ton, ton of stuff for the Sponge Band and the Orbitsons over the years. So, yeah, it's just like I go, ah, people go, why didn't you move to L.A.? I go, why would I move to L.A. when I got everything right here? Look at all the bands that have been signed out of Detroit for God. And they're still getting signed, you know. I go, why move? I can't even understand why I would have to go anywhere. I know. And you raise your family. How many kids do you have? If you don't mind me asking. Oh, 34. <laughs> <laughs> All those girls that swear. <laughs> I'm kidding. I have five beautiful kids. You five. have five kids? Oh, wow. Five I have two. <laughs> <laughs> do you have any pets? I got a beautiful German Shepherd dog. She's four years old. She oh, waits to go into the car every day at a certain time. Yep, she loves that. What's your pup's name, Paula? Lucy and she's amazing. I love her to pieces. I post pictures of her all the time. She's the best dog ever. I love her. <laughs> Patty, do you have a do you have a pup? I have two cats and I don't want any more cats, but we inherited one because of the death in the family. So uh, <laughs> she like <lived>. Hannah. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah, I was like no more cats and then I had to take on a cat. <laughs> so okay. All right, are there other I mentioned four bands that you've been in. Let's see. Loud House was the one I could go the furthest back. What what, what got you into that? And was there something before that? Oh, yeah. I mean, do, if you, you know, hang out in Detroit, you're playing in some band someplace. And Detroit always had just fantastic jam sessions at places like Tracks and Kicks. You know, you spend your whole Tuesday evening bebopping back and forth. So, yeah, I mean, I did stuff with... Like um, a bit, I think the first band I played in a club with was The Bodies, and it was The Void, Spider, The Bradford Youth Gang, Gypsy, you know. Then I was playing drums with Thornetta Davis and Roscoe, and then the, the shit, man, Sharecroppers of Soul, Chef Chris. God, what am I missing here? I'm, I'm sure I'm missing something, but it's just, you know, there's just such a wealth of music and the clubs i just go god you couldn't not play you know gigs in detroit there's just so much going on so was drums your first foray into music uh like, you know it was guitar that was the first thing i recall picking up but then i thought well drums could be cool then i started playing drums and i spent a lot of time working on that to get some kind of level of you know technique together and uh or be proficient at some level and uh, then it was like well now start doing the sponge thing so you know i i really haven't played drums for many years i still do it in the studio once in a while i've been on some kid rock records and and um some other stuff but it's like i just don't do it much anymore well i'll be well, with you. you guys i'm sorry but our 30 minutes are up paula so well, um, we want to thank you can I say one thing? You should okay. show Howard Stern this show. <laughs> <laughs> Great idea. Great idea. Get him to come on. 
<laughs> Get him to come on. The so we're show. talking about songs that got me, songs that got me through it. Uh, visit MimiRecords.com, and um, thank you, Vinny. And that's another episode of the Chatty Caddy. Palo Alto. Talk, 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 tal